Hey, my name is Itai, and today we will learn about how to get started with um, React, Bit, Vit, and building with ShadCN. Uh, so we'll cover on how to get started with building with ShadCN, uh, all of your Bit apps, micro frontends, and even design system components through a single um, simplified flow. So um, first thing first, uh, we're going to go to the main ShadCN UI um, scope. This were the base of the integration works and I'm just going to copy uh, this command to get started with our starter. So let's open a terminal, paste the command and in this case I'm also going to make sure that all of my components will be scoped under my name. So I'll just add a default scope. <clears throat> uh, all right, now uh, the generator start, stopped working. Let's see exactly what we have. So we'll go into the workspace and open our code editor. Zoom in a little bit. And I'll just open terminal here for convenience. So uh, in this uh, workspace, what we got already generated is two components. The first component is a um, shareable Tailwind config based on uh, one of the themes from Shard CN. Essentially, this is now an independent component that I can actually help managing a theme, uh, a Tailwind based theme. Um, through Bit, this will be versioned and independently consumable by any applications that you want, whether this application is maintained in Bit or outside Bit, it's gonna be available for you. So you can streamline and standardize all of your um, Tailwind theming options. So you can uh, have it in a standard place. The second thing that we have here created is a small environment for Bit. Now, if you want to learn more a little bit about environment, I'm not gonna cover it right now, it's going to be uh, there's additional documentation and videos on that topic, but let's see here what we have. Essentially, it's a basic um, way to control your component workflow for um, with this setup. As you see, the only thing it does essentially is uh, adds the Tailwind config as a component into our preview and rendering uh, capabilities in Bit, and we'll quickly see how it goes. And it also sets up a generator for any number of applications and some standards for our LinkedIn, Prettier and other configs, which you can all find them here. If you want to override additional configs like TypeScript and others, you can definitely do that uh, as you wish. Okay, so let's get started. And first, um, let's create a small application where we can actually um, use those components in. So I'll run bit templates. Now let's create a basic application. This application is drive by Vit, just to have a place to render our components. So I'll do Vit create React app, uh, my demo app. <coughs> okay, so Vit created a small uh, Vit based application for me. Now, usually as you start building your application, you know, you just uh, code however you will, but sometimes you get to a place where you want to create a separate component or maybe use ShadCN um, or just create any other React component. Now, of, you can do two things when it comes to Bit. You can, first of all, always just create, you know, a component subdirectory in, my, in your application and have, you know, um, my component.tsx here and start implementing the component as part of your application as you would normally do in any other scenario. However, in Bit, uh, you can actually decide to manage any component you want. And I'm using component uh, very broadly here. Component can be a single UI element, component can be a hook, a context, component can be a complete feature with nested components inside of it. Essentially think about it as a way to logically wrap together a set of functionality, version it, maintain it as a separate thing alongside your app, almost like its own library. And this is where the uniqueness of the ShadCN support for Bit, or Bit support for ShadCN UI um, comes very handy. Because in if you would use ShadCN UI normal generator, you will essentially have 
the code from the design system embedded in your project. However, in BIT, you actually have the opportunity now to scale up um, your usage of such, such an UI and actually use that as a baseline for a design system. Version your changes, apply all of your things and walk away from them. Let me just quickly run the templates to show you how this works. Okay, so I have here a few dedicated generators around Shadzi and UI. Let me use the basic one for Shadzi and UI. Be it create Shadzi and UI. And now here I can use any of the components you can find on the main um, repository from Shadzi and UI. You can add um, namespace and for it, whatever, but the component name should really be coming from them. So let's call, let's create. Um, Let's create um, design button. So what this does is um, we'll go to Shatzien, pull all the code from it, generate a bit component from uh, the button implementation of Shatzien, um, auto install Radix UI, uh, add all of the dependencies needed. We'll actually run uh, linting and formatting as part of the pipeline here. Um, and get you to a state where you actually have this button uh, implementation coming from Shatsi and UI, but also the rest of wrapping this as an independently an independent almost library through bit. So we see here a new uh, subdirectory called design. In it, we see the button. Now, <clears throat> what bit creates when we create a component? One second, let me restart my TypeScript. So we have an index file that points to our button implementation. And as you see here, this is coming uh, from Shadzian. A little bit of linting stuff that can be optimized for Tailwind. Let's skip that. Um, Bit also auto generates some tests for you. Obviously, you should be optimizing this um, to your implementation. Um, and a small composition, think about like a way to preview and render how this component looks like, and even dedicated documentation for uh, this component. Now, if I want in my application, I can go to it and uh, let's find it real quick. And I can import button from button and let's render button instead of my hello world. And that's it. Now I can use this separate component. I can manage it as an its own entity through bit. Let's run a bit list for a second and see exactly what we have created. So as you see here in my workspace, I have actually four components. One of them is my environment, another a demo bit application, our button component, and a shareable Tailwind config containing my theming. Now let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's create a more composed uh, component based on Shadzien. Let's create a form. So bit create um, design slash form. And uh, oh, sorry, need to specify the name of the template. So as you see, bit understand that there are um, essentially a little bit more components because button is also a component of form, but two components that we don't have in our workspace. One of them is label and another one is checkbox. I can choose to have bit generate those components for Shadzian as well, and then I'm going to use them, or I can tell bit not to generate them. And then obviously I'll need to modify the implementation to have my own maybe uh, label or my own checkbox. Bit will try to see if you have an implementation of label or checkbox um, and know if to recommend you to create another but it's really much up to you. But here in this case, let's generate both of them. Okay, so as you see, we generate a few, quite a few more components. We validate always that dependencies are installed and uh, available for all bit components in our workspace. Right, and here in my design library, I have button, checkbox, form, and label. Now I can click through each of them. And in this case, you can see that label is actually has a more advanced composition. Essentially, uh, what we do is we actually pull 
the actual code example for the documentation as much as we can and build uh, your compositions from them. Uh, now, as with the previous component, right, I can um, import form. I can import it, I could do essentially start using it in my app, but let's see something uh, fairly unique here. So, Bit has a dedicated dev server uh, that renders all of your components for you um, in separate runtimes um, alongside your code. So if you want to build and maintain your components in their own workflow without uh, changing the app, you can. Obviously, you can always run the application, see how they change in the same space. Um, however, this is fairly useful if you are building a design system and are looking to scale up uh, all of your work. Dev server on the initial load takes a few more seconds. Now, there you go. And we see here all of our components, uh, whether they are the Telwi config, our demo application, our environment, and different uh, Shatsi and base UI components. And let's quickly go to checkbox. So as you see, uh, Bit generates a beautiful documentation um, for this. We can see the preview that we have. Uh, we even can see the complete auto-generated API reference. In dev mode, it takes a little longer to load, but you can see the API endpoint. I think button has a more beautiful one. Uh, you see all the variables. You can even see uh, form and a few things that are more complex. Um, <clears throat> you can even see from this UI, you know, the implementation. Essentially, all features in beta are available here uh, for you as you're used to them. And you can even go and see the dependencies and see how things are structured. Again, building the dependency graph as part of the dev server takes a little longer, but you can see that form component depends on label and also on the on an internal tool for Shad CNUI. Um, so now from this point on, let's go back to my ID. Uh, once you are ready uh, to ship your application to run or even build your design system elements, um, usually during CI, you will run the bit tag command. Uh, you can use Ripple CI to build your components or you can use your own CI. So you will tag your components and you will export them later um, to a dedicated scope. Again, there's a few more documentation and videos on that topic as well. Um, bit tag will just run all of your LinkedIn build pipeline uh, compilation everything for the application and your shared components and then each component will be independently available for you to use as its own asset so essentially alongside the application we have a growing design system that is by default able to be reusable as well as a shareable tailwind config that you can already use to streamline theming across multiple applications multiple sites that you and different teams in your organization maintain. Now, if we go here uh, to our Shadzian um, UI plugin place, uh, there's documentation here for you to get started and learn how to use, how to embed uh, this workflow into any other pre-existing uh, React-based workflow in bit. Um, you can see here a few examples on, you know, how to set up a, a Tailwind config that is a share shareable, uh, you can see some of the secret sauce around how we generate uh, all of these components by pulling them from Shatsian. Um, and obviously there is a couple examples here, like, you know, how a button uh, thing to Shatsian is used. And as you see here, this button has three unique versions. Each one of them has its own change log. You can even compare between uh, past version of the component, whether you compare, you know, code compare, uh, rendering comparison uh, or even dependency graph comparisons between two indistinct versions. You can see the API reference, obviously, uh, sorry, uh, graph, and even user analytics of that component if it has any, right? In this case, nobody really used this button, uh, but it may be. Uh, all right, so thanks so much for listening on this uh, quick video chat. And uh, if you have any issues or would like to do a little bit more things with Bit, React, Halloween, Angular, Review, or any other framework, feel free, feel free to reach out to us through GitHub, Slack, um, emails, and uh, or Twitter. We try to keep ourselves available. And uh, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.